So I have here a little while loop that goes 10 times, and I'm accomplishing that by having a, my loop control variable x start at 1. My loop condition is that x is less than or equal to 10. Each time the loop runs, I'm going to print out the value that's currently in x, and then I'm going to increment, or increase by 1, x, so that I get closer and closer to this condition, and I eventually stop. If I run this code, then I get the numbers 1 through 10 printed on the screen, um, as the loop runs and then finally stops. A lot of times when we know already how many times a loop is going to go and we're doing some sort of very regular counting like this, we'll want to use a different kind of loop um, to accomplish the same thing, and that's called a for loop. I'm going to basically make the same thing work um, in a for loop. So it starts with the word for, and the major difference between the for loop and the while and do while loop is that the loop control variable does its um, starting, its initialization, it has its continuation condition, and it has its update expression all inside the header. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my loop control variable, but it's actually inside of the um, parentheses that go with the for loop. So this is my loop control variable, and I'm telling it I want it to start at 1, just like we did up here with the while loop. In between these expressions, I put a semicolon, so I'm going to put a semicolon here, in the middle, I put the continuation condition, which is exactly the same as it was in the while condition. So I'm going to go while well, this guy is less than or equal to 10, then another semicolon, and the last piece tells the loop how to count or update its loop control variable. Since I want to count out by 1 each time, then I'm just going to place my x++ here. And then I'm going to put the action associated with what I want to have happen inside the curlies for the loop. So system.out.println x. Okay, so in order for this to work, I'm going to have to get rid of this guy so I don't have x twice. And when I run this, you will see that it has the same exact output. Okay, the only trick that you have to remember is that when I declare my loop control variable inside of the heading for the for loop, it only exists in between these two curlies. So I can print it in here, but if I attempt to get to it out here, so let me see what happens. If I try to print x out here, it's going to be underlined, and if I hover my mouse over it, it tells me that it cannot be resolved to a variable because it doesn't exist outside the for loop, and I just have to be aware of that. If I want it to exist outside the for loop, then I can declare it before the loop and just have the loop give it a starting value. Now all these things work fine. I can print it in the loop, I can print it after the loop. If I print it after the loop, just out of curiosity, let's see what value it has in it at the end. So I'm going to get my numbers 1 through 10, and then the last time through, it has been updated to 11, and so I get my 11 on the screen when I print with this line.